Well, hello, the Internet. You've got that funk. I hope you're doing well. I stayed up until stupid o'clock in the morning watching the Democratic presidential debate last night on CNN. And I watched it again about half an hour ago to keep it fresh in my head to make this video. And I would like to share with you my thoughts about the candidates, uh, some of the issues that they discussed, as well as make a little comparison between last night's debate and the more recent uh, GOP debate, which was also hosted by CNN. First of all, I want to talk about the candidates a little bit because, like many of you, I'm sure, I was not particularly well acquainted with the uh, other three candidates. I really, I was only familiar with Hillary and Bernie in terms of any of their policy decisions. I knew what Martin O'Malley looked like, um, but I didn't really, I've never heard anything uh, from Martin O'Malley um, in the press. And I'm sure that's really unfortunate for the three candidates um, who aren't Bernie or Hillary because uh, it's hard enough for Bernie to get any mainstream media attention So it must be even harder for the other three guys and uh, that is perhaps a little bit unfair Nevertheless, uh, I have to say that uh, Lincoln Chafee uh, came across as a very likable man I respect the fact that he's uh, done local government. He's been a governor and he's worked in Congress um, and he seemed like, like I say, a very likable person. Um, but quite frankly, I, I don't think that he possesses anywhere near the gravitas that someone has to have if they're going to have any hope of winning over the electorate in a presidential election. So I don't really see Lincoln, uh, uh, sorry, Lincoln Chafee as a particularly credible candidate in the longer term. Having said that, if it came down to it, I would prefer Lincoln Chafee over anybody on the Republican ticket, for sure. I think I would have to say that of all five of the uh, candidates who were on stage last night. Martin O'Malley came across as extremely knowledgeable, very likable, very articulate. He also has served both on the local level, the uh, Senate level, and as a governor. He seems to be very keen on his green policies, which I have an awful lot of respect for. And, uh, you know, he stood his ground on the issues where he disagreed with the other candidates. Uh, I think without coming across as petulant or um, abrasive. And I think that was important. It was one of the most distinguishing things about last night's debate as compared to the GOP debate. And I'm not sure if it was deliberate or not on the part of the candidates. But they weren't really sniping at each other, even when they were sort of prompted to do so uh, by the people asking questions. They, they, they were extremely respectful towards each other without looking like they were kissing one another's ass. I definitely got the impression when I watched the GOP debate a couple of weeks back uh, that when they were being nice to each other, it was out of a sense of obligation that they should appear to be deferential, but really they couldn't stand each other. That's the way it sort of came across. I didn't really get that flavor from last night's debate, which is a nice, refreshing change because we don't really need that in politics. There's going to be enough of that when it comes to the, uh, the proper race between the nominees for re Democratic and Republican tickets. Anyway, uh, moving along to Jim Webb now, who I was completely unfamiliar with. I hadn't really, really heard of him before. Um, so last night for me was an introduction to Martin O'Malley, uh, Lincoln, Chafee, and Jim Webb. <clears throat> and I thought Jim Webb come across as a very knowledgeable person. He seemed quite proud of his experience and his record, uh, which I've got a lot of respect for what he's accomplished and so forth. However, <clears throat> I, I think everybody is going to be taking the piss out of Jim Webb for probably the rest of the campaign because he did come across as a little bit petulant and moody and his general demeanor, which is no, it's not a fault as such, but on TV it just doesn't work. I mean, he really looks like he's got a pole shoved up his ass. He just seems so uptight. And he was getting really, really, really aggravated at the fact that he perceived himself to be not getting as much time as he might have been allowed to speak. I would have to agree with Jim Webb on that one. I think Jim Webb in particular and uh, Lincoln Chafee both, it didn't seem to me like they got equitable time with the other three. Uh, certainly no one got equi equitable time to Hillary or that's how it came across because that's, that's because Hillary had to answer back to an awful lot of things other people were saying about her or her policies. So I suppose that's just an in inevitability of the way the debate was structured that Hillary was going to get a bit more time to speak. Um, whether that's fair or not, I'll leave that up to you guys. Obviously, I'm a Bernie Sanders supporter, and I was familiar with Bernie before the debate started. I was familiar with virtually all of the uh, positions Bernie took in the debate before the debate happened. So Bernie didn't really say anything last night that surprised me as such. But I think it's good because um, it's certainly my perception from across the pond looking on the Internet that uh, Bernie doesn't seem to have gotten an awful lot of traction in mainstream media. I know he has done 
plenty of appearances on the Sunday news talk shows and so forth. But just in terms of your nightly news coverage, I don't really think there's been an awful lot of coverage of Bernie as compared to Hillary. Um, but he certainly enjoyed a, a better exposure, I suppose, than the other three candidates who weren't Hillary. <clears throat> as far as Hillary Clinton was concerned, you know, obviously by now we've all been very well acquainted with Hillary for a long time. And I don't really think that anybody is going to change their mind about whether they like Hillary or not, um, regardless of whatever she says on the campaign trail. I think the th the problem and, and the benefit of being Hillary Clinton is exactly that. She's got an awful lot of work to do if she wants to change the minds of people who already are her adversaries. Um, and I think that she can absolutely rely on the people uh, who have been pitching for Hillary ever since 2008. So she's got an incredible advantage over the other four candidates. And as far as her demeanor goes, I mean, you know, you can say what you like about Hillary, but, you know, she is a consummate politician. She is extremely well versed. She's got an awful lot of practice in performing in this sort of situation, not just from the 2008 presidential debates, although I'm sure that helped her out, but just, you know, 25 years in the spotlight um, being Bill Clinton's wife and, uh, and subsequently a senator and secretary of state. So, and one thing that I think is interesting and I'm actually grateful to notice about this campaign, and it was also true in 2008, I think, is that no one is suggesting that uh, if Hillary gets elected, that it will really be Bill Clinton in the back room calling all the shots and Hillary will just be, you know, the front for another Bill Clinton presidency. No one suggests that, and I think that's a good thing. It actually shows that our democracy is a lot more mature than it might have otherwise been because I think at times gone by, if there was a woman running for president who happened to have a husband who was an ex-president, that people would have made that sort of um, association. Thankfully, I think everybody accepts, as a matter of fact, that Hillary Clinton is her own woman. And if she was elected president, I think she would be extremely adamant about casting her own mark on history as the first woman president. I have to say that uh, Hillary did a little bit to assuage my concerns about uh, her electability. Um, not so much about the email thing, which I'll talk more about in a minute. Just about herself, because, you know, it's my perception that Hillary plays to whatever crowd she's speaking to. You know, she's, she, like I say, she is a consummate politician, and because of that, I do find her a lot harder to trust uh, than Bernie Sanders, for example. Um, and don't get me wrong, Bernie's been in politics his entire life. Bernie is also a consummate politician, but he is a completely different style to Hillary. And I think um, that Hillary Clinton did acquit herself very well insofar as she stuck up for, for her positions and she didn't come across as... Um, I didn't really see the, the dark side of Hillary that we all know is there from our previous experience of Hillary in, in, uh, the, in the White House uh, as Secretary of State and also as a Senator. Um, so yeah, I, I think she, she, she played her hand pretty well last night. So did Bernie Sanders, if you ask me. I mean, Bernie um, reputedly didn't want to do any preparation for the debate. He wanted to basically lean on his own command of the facts, his own incredible uh, powers of recollection, which are very impressive for a 73-year-old man. And um, yeah, I, I thought Bernie acquitted himself very, very well. And it was clear that there was an awful lot more Bernie supporters in the audience than there was for any of the other four candidates, just based on the level of applause. Now I'm going to talk about some of the issues that came up. First of all, if Bernie had an Achilles heel in the debate last night, it was on the issue of guns. I don't ask, actually uh, blame Bernie for what he said, but I think he could have said it a little bit better because they sort of, because of, because of the way TV works, it sort of seemed like for a moment there they had Bernie on the ropes when it comes to the gun issue because uh, he voted against the Brady Bill five times. And the way he explained it, which I accept, is that, you know, he it was representing a rural state, that being Vermont. And um, see, this is the thing that... Uh, I think he should have said, but he didn't say. He tried to say it, but I don't think it came out very well because, like I say, I think they had him flustered on the ropes there. But basically, if you're a House congressman or a senator, you are elected to represent the interests of the people who put you in office. And as a senator in particular, 
you know, you're expected to vote according to your conscience to a pretty large degree, but you are also expected to keep in mind the wishes of the people who put you there. That's the point of a democracy. And what Bernie was trying to say was he was representing what he knew to be his constituents' wishes. I, I, I really can't fault that. Um, he wasn't representing the special interests uh, of the NRA or anybody else when he did that vote. He was talking about representing his constituents faithfully according to what they basically led him to believe they wanted for their state. So I can't really fault Bernie for that, but I did, don't think he handled that as well as he might have been able to do. <clears throat> uh, Lincoln Chafee didn't really say anything from my point of view, that stood out particularly well. So I won't really talk too much about how he handled the issues because I don't think he fell flat on his face on any issue. But neither do I think that he had any moment where he sort of stood out above the others and, and made you go, oh yeah, maybe there's something to this guy. Martin O'Malley, on the other hand, was quite, quite keen on his green credentials um, and his aspirations. They had him a bit on the ropes when it comes to Baltimore because he was mayor of Baltimore for a time. And as I'm sure... Most viewers are probably aware Baltimore is one city in America that's got its, more than its fair share of problems. Uh, there's an awful lot of poverty and uh, unemployment in, in Baltimore. Um, community tensions are very high uh, between the poorer parts of the city and other parts of the city and so on. And I, I do think they had him a little bit on the ropes as regards Baltimore and Maryland in general for that same exact reason. However, um, I, I don't think that uh, anybody scored a knockout punch on anybody else in last night's debate. So that's, I suppose, a good thing. If anything, if anybody knocked anybody out, it was Jim Webb who knocked himself out by constantly complaining that he wasn't getting enough time. And also, at the very end of the debate, uh, Jim Webb mentioned that, uh, you know, he, the, the enemy he's most proud of making is the one he killed in Vietnam. I don't think that played very well on TV, Jim, and you might want to rethink that one. Uh, this isn't the, the 2000 election. It's not the 2008 election. It's the 2016 we're working on now. And I think, um, you know, everyone is, uh, I'm sure, grateful for all veterans who serve, you know, the country. Having said that, uh, I don't think you can trade on that necessarily in the current political climate as being a, a huge selling point. Okay, um, what else does it say? Um, Hillary Clinton's email situation. I, I think Bernie basically saved her from that one, even though she did a pretty good job of, uh, in my opinion anyway, of sort of pouring cold water on what the press seems to want to make into a fire. You know, she said that she was testifying to the Senate committee, and she insisted that that testify, that she testified in public where they wanted to do it in private. Etc. So I think Hillary's done what she can do uh, to throw, assuage that situation. And I think Bernie Sanders was spot on the money when he said, listen, you know, this is a media issue, basically. And the country, the people in the country really don't give a damn about Hillary's emails. And, you know, let's move on and talk about actual issues. Hillary was so thankful for that that she stopped everything and shook Bernie's hand. And I, I, I got the feeling that was quite genuine from Hillary. So, um... I don't necessarily think that the email debacle is going to be the Achilles heel uh, for Hillary that the Republicans are hoping it will be. And I have to say I agree with Hillary Clinton when she basically tries to portray the email scandal as something that the Republicans are pushing more aggressively simply because this is an election cycle. I think if this was the year after an election cycle, uh, they might pursue it, but nowhere near as aggressively. Uh, so that's worth bearing in mind. You know, you have to keep a, the bigger picture in mind. Now I want to talk about some of the issues that they talked about. Um, you know, when it comes to income inequality and uh, the, the, the gap between the have-nots and the have-lots, you, you literally can't get any better than Bernie Sanders in terms of uh, his policies and his passion. I think Hillary tried to play to that crowd a little bit, but I think she fails because, as she said herself on stage last night when she was a senator for New York, she used to work with Wall Street. And I think if she had a belly flop in last night's debate, that was it exactly. She, she mentioned that in 2007, she went to the bankers and said, hey, knock it off, you can't do that. And then, you know, the next year, everything collapsed. So, you know, Hillary, with respect, waving your finger and saying, hey, please don't, or I'm going to say, hey, please don't even louder. It's not very effective. And I think if you're aspiring to the White House, 
you want to come up with a better angle to defend your record than that. Um, I think the other the other candidates, uh, Lincoln, Martin, and Jim Webb, uh, also played a little bit of lip service to the uh, inequalities that exist um, with wealth distribution. None of those three, though, really seem to have any kind of a major plan, other than Martin O'Malley, who is basically just saying, let's raise tax on the rich, which I think is... Uh, you know, a default position for probably all five of the candidates on, on stage, but it's just a matter of who would raise taxes on who and by how much. I think it's fair to presume that uh, Bernie Sanders will have the most aggressive uh, shakeup of the tax system if he gets elected uh, over the other four candidates. Uh, let's talk about a little bit about the education, uh, the higher education part of it. Um, one thing that I think Bernie Sanders would uh, benefit from as regards this issue because I think he's got an awful lot of support when he wants to make a, a community college free for all is uh, to press on Hillary this fact you know Hillary said that she wants to make she doesn't want college to be free for Donald Trump's kids and then Bernie come back and say you know everybody he, Trump is going to pay an awful lot more tax as a result of his tax proposals than he is paying at the moment and from my point of view Bernie should have then said so if Trump is paying tax and his kids have the right to benefit from him paying tax in the same way that everybody else's kids have the right to benefit from them paying tax. That's the angle he should have taken, in my opinion. I also think that it would have been worth uh, Bernie saying to Hillary, either sternly or jokingly, when Hillary said that she doesn't want tuition to be free, but she wants it to be affordable. Well, quite frankly, Bernie should have said, Hillary, there's nothing more affordable than free. I think that would have gone down really, really well. Because it's true. There is nothing more affordable than free. Um, as regards expanding Medicare and so forth, again, you can't be Bernie Sanders' platform for that. Um, Hillary Clinton sort of brushed that aside. She did say she wanted to protect Social Security. Both Hillary, Martin O'Malley, and Bernie Sanders all uh, say that they want to protect Social Security, which is really, really important, and it's not even impossible to do. As Bernie Sanders quite rightly said, all you've got to do is take the cap off, uh, because I believe it's around about 115 or 120 thousand a year. Uh, everything above that, you don't have to pay uh, any more into the Social Security system, but you pay up until that level. I think they should take that cap off completely and add a stroke that would uh, ensure that Social Security um, was solvent for at least another 50 or 60 years. So you know. This is a thing that uh, I think the Democrats were really pressing home uh, in tandem last night, but from different angles, is that uh, you know the problems that America faces are fixable, and the medicine might taste bad for a few people, i.e. the very, very wealthy. But in general, um, I think it was quite clear last night that all five candidates actually give a damn and want to improve the lives of ordinary working Americans. Now, um, I'm going to do a little bit of a comparison now. I see my time is really getting on, so I'm going to do a little bit of a comparison now between the debate last night and the GOP debate from a couple of weeks ago. That last GOP debate, they barely talked about actual issues. Most of the talk was about the personalities of the various candidates, and, um, and there was an awful lot of personal sniping going on between the candidates, which was blissfully missing last night. And uh, when the Republicans said nice things about each other, you had the feeling that it was sort of obligatory. And last night, I had the feeling, especially between uh, Bernie and Jim and, and Hillary, that, you know, they all sat in the Senate at the same time together, obviously worked together, and I, I do think they have a certain level of esteem, genuine esteem for one another, rather than paying lip service to it, which is how it came across when I watched the Republican debate a few weeks ago. Also, um, there's so much clear blue water between the positions of the Republican candidates and the Democratic candidates that it's extremely stark. This election, more than any other that I can remember since Bill Clinton became president, this election, there is definitely a noticeable, humongous difference between the Republican candidates and their platforms and the Democratic candidates and their platforms. In previous elections, I remember saying myself in the year 2000 that, uh, you know, Tweedledee, Tweedledum. You know, I don't think that's the case anymore. I don't think it really is ever the case, don't get me wrong. There's always a, a, a distinction between uh, the conservatives and liberals uh, in America. 
And, um, but usually that distinction is which set of special interests are going to be served, the, the, the Democratic special interests or the Republican special interests. Well, I think um, the problem of special interests still exists and is personified by Hillary Clinton, frankly. Uh, having said that, um, I, I do think as well that Bernie Sanders wants, he said it himself, he wants a political revolution. And I think what Bernie's talking about there is getting people to rise up and use their democratic power. Petition Congress. Tell them, look, I'm not going to vote for you. And it's not just, you, you have to get thousands, tens of thousands of people per constituency to do that before you'll even begin to make these Republicans quake in their boots because thanks to gerrymandering and uh, the corruption of money in politics, incumbents tend to be pretty safe uh, these days, and that includes Democrats and Republicans. So um, I, I think the only way we're going to really change things is if we put Bernie in the White House. And uh, once Bernie's nominated, I'm quite sure that the, uh, if Bernie gets nominated, I should say, I'm quite sure that he would be able to rally a massive movement of people into action in a way that even Barack Obama failed to do in 2008. Um, just a few more things about, uh, about the debate last night. You know, they, they, they did sort of roundly criticize the Republicans in general. Um, and except for one quip by Martin O'Malley, nobody really, you know, had a stab at Trump or anybody else in any single Republican. And I think, judging by the debates, if you compare the last GOP debate with this debate, it is absolutely paramount that we cannot let anyone from the GOP get the White House in 2016. Maybe if they reform their party, and maybe if we do manage to get money out of the politics in the sense that it is at the moment anyway, um, maybe in 2020 they might uh, deserve another chance. But right now, there's literally no Republican running for the office that should be allowed anywhere near the White House as a resident. That's my personal opinion. Um, I don't know if I said this already, but I'll say it again if I did. Um, I would have any one of those five candidates last night over any of the GOP candidates. Even Lincoln Chafee, if it came to that, would make a better president than, say, Jeb Bush or Donald Trump, God forbid. Anyway, I really look forward to uh, hearing what you guys have to say about my thoughts on this debate. I'd like to hear your thoughts about the debate as well, if you watched it. And if you also uh, put yourself through the GOP debate, uh, I'd like to hear your comparisons as well. Um, I want to thank you for watching this video all the way to the end if you watched it this far. And until next time, may the force be with you always.